morning. It's great to see you. Let's stand together. Sing this with me. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. That's right. Sing it again. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We gather together to lift up your name, to call on the Savior, to call on the grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people see. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves, there is hope in your name. In the name in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on the Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. It's so great to see you here. My name is Kenny Lewis. I'm the worship pastor. Welcome to Grace this morning. We're going to continue to sing. We're going to continue to praise. Let's lift up our voice. Yeah. 
Sing this with me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. Sing along as soon as you can. Though I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am.
Everyone needs compassion. Sing this with me. And everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. And everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. And the hope of nations. mighty to save forever author of salvation heroes and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave so take me you find me and all my fears and failures and fill my life again I give my life to follow and everything I believe in now I surrender and say Heroes and 
Amen. For the glory of the risen King. Amen. Well, we've come to our time of communion this morning, and so if you have your communion kits ready, go ahead, and you can peel back that top layer and reveal the wafer. If you want to, you can kind of set that to the side, uh, or you can just leave it in there. But uh, while you're doing that, let me, let me just give to you a remembrance. As, as I remember, as we remember the body and the blood of Jesus Christ this morning, it's, it's very appropriate for us to to think about the terrible cost that he paid for you and me. Um, in contrast, you know, there is a cost. Jesus said that if you're going to follow me, there's going to be a cost involved. But, of course, that is, that's not a quid pro quo cost, cost is it? Um, it is very different, very different in quality and quantity. But nevertheless, as, as, as um, I thought about Paul, when he wrote to the Philippians, he, he said, this, this passage, and you'll, you'll recall it when I say it. But he said, But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus as, as Christ Jesus as my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Now, for the sake of learning something new, um, I, I thought about flipping the script of that verse just a little bit, okay? And so what if, we, what if we read it this way, all right? Can you imagine Jesus saying this? But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of rescuing Sean. Or you put in your name. You can put in Abel. Or you can, you can put in... Troy, you can put in your name. Whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of rescuing, put in your name. And what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Sean as my son and brother, for whose sake I set aside all things, and I consider them rubbish so that I might never be separated from him. Now, now, some of you might be thinking, and probably rightly so, now, Sean, that's heresy, right? You can't say that, and perhaps I shouldn't. But I can show you a communion cup, and I can show you a picture of Jesus telling everybody that he had to gain me, that he had to gain you, and there was nothing that he wouldn't do, even setting aside for just a moment setting aside a part of his glory that he might put on flesh and that he might become the atoning sacrifice 
for our sins. So go ahead and remove that other layer and reveal the juice. And I, as you're doing that, I want to remind you what Jesus said himself. Greater love has no one than this, but that he lay down his life for his friends. And I think, isn't, isn't there something worth remembering? And for what it's worth, isn't it a pleasant reminder for ourselves what Jesus has done for us? Let's pray. Father, we just want to commit this to you. You revealed yourself as Adonai, as El Shaddai, but you also revealed yourself as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, that God would give his only begotten Son, that we might be able to enjoy the pleasantness of your, of, of your company for all eternity. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that you spared no expense for us. And so, even though I took liberty with that verse, Lord, I do not, I don't think I take liberty with your love. I think that, I think, if anything, the human language, we just don't have the vocabulary. The human spirit, we just don't have, we just don't have the passion that is necessary to properly describe what you've done. But for now, receive our obedience and communion for we remember the body and the blood of Jesus this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbid it shall. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Will Amen. Thank you, praise team, for that great reminder. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Sean Lee. I'm the pastor of Connection here at Grace, and oh, thank you so much. So, wow, you've become unhinged this morning. That's awesome. <laughs> so, I love that. No, they love the Lord, let me tell you. But uh, anyway, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Grace Community Church. We're so glad that you're here this morning, uh, that you've really, you've given us your time this morning uh, to make his praise glorious, and we're so glad that you're here. Um, by the way, everyone should have received a bulletin when you came in, and inside is a connection card. Uh, and so uh, do us a favor, especially if you are a first-time guest, would you mind terribly just filling that out for us and dropping that in the uh, um, in our offertory plates afterwards, because we would love to have a proper record of your coming. You matter to God, therefore you matter to us, and we want to make sure that we know that you've come. Also, if you give us your address, we promise you we want to drop something really fun at your door. So uh, just that's all I can say about that. The second thing is, if you're a return guest, do us a favor. Uh, let us know that you've come back. We would love to rejoice with you. And, and also, you might have some questions for me or about grace, and we want to make sure that those things are answered. And finally, everybody, you can use this connection card uh, as a means of uh, prayer requests. So let us know how we can pray for you uh, or update us on some things that are going on uh, in your life. So... Let's continue now to worship the Lord through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Uh, so if you're a first-time guest, this does not mean anything to you. Uh, we're just so glad that you're here. This is just an opportunity for those of us who are members and regular tenders uh, to be able to contribute. And so, uh, again, we're not expecting you to give unless you just want to. Um, for the rest of us, there are two ways. Of course, our ushers are going to come forward, and, and they're going to collect the offering. Or you can also use something called push pay. And so all you have to do is just go to rosselgrace.com, scroll to the very bottom of the screen, and you'll see the little uh, giving icon. Uh, and so you can use that as well. So let's pray, and uh, let's dedicate this offering to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we it's just been our great privilege to be able to sing those great songs Songs like Amazing Grace, songs about your amazing love. And Lord Jesus, we, what, what else can we do but to offer you our very best this morning, to offer you our songs of praise and deliverance. We want to make your praise glorious. We want to magnify you. And so, Lord, those of us who, we know the, the secret that whom the Son sets free, they are free indeed. And so, Lord, you have called us, though, as your body to go and to present that gospel to this world. And we know, Lord, that there are many that they are, they are hogtied by sin. They do not know that all it takes is a look to you and you will free them. And so, Lord Jesus, help us to be the consistent and the beautiful witness that you've called us to be. And also, Lord, we dedicate this offering to you that, that the gospel may remain unhindered, that we'll use every penny to assist the transfer, transfer of information into transformation in people's lives. And so, Father, that's why we give this in Jesus' name. Amen.
environment for local foster families and adoptive families to come together with other people who understand um, what they're going through, understand what it's like to be a foster parent or adoptive parent. May is National Foster Care Awareness Month. So on Saturday, May 22nd, Lighthouse, together with our local Child, Youth, and Family Department and CASA, and Royal Family Kids Camp are going to have a huge citywide foster care awareness event at St. Mark's Lutheran Church off of Main Street, just around the corner in their parking lot right off Main. There will be a garage sale also with all the proceeds benefiting local foster families. Every two minutes, a child enters foster care. That means by the time this video is over, another child will need a home. If you have ever felt called to become a foster parent, I would love to talk to you more about that. After church, I will be out in the lobby to answer any questions you may have. Also to talk to you about how Lighthouse supports local foster families. At Lighthouse, we believe that everyone can do something. So what will you do about that child that just entered
Well, we appreciate Barbara being here, and her team will be in the lobby. Any questions at all today about foster care, adoption, they are there. They have information, and they can tell you more about the support group that goes on here at Grace all the time. Hey, Class 301, Discovering Ministry, is tonight, 5 to 8 o'clock. You can register on your connection card. That really does help us plan ahead. I have mentioned the last couple of weeks that coming soon, don't know exactly when, we're going to get back to serving communion the way we used to coming forward with our teams across the front, which means we're rebuilding those teams. If you would like to be a part of us being a server, then if you would on your connection card, somewhere on there, make sure your name and your contact information is there, but uh, put early or late, whichever service you regularly attend. All right, sound good? Hey, do me a favor, stand up, say good morning to a few people around you. They probably slipped in while you weren't watching. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Several years ago, Martha Stewart uh, spent some time in the slammer. Um, her, her crime was not a flopped souffle, nor was it burned brownies. She actually got caught committing a crime called insider trading. Now, receiving insider information in the world of investing and on Wall Street, bad idea. If you have any doubts, call Martha. However, when it comes to life, receiving inside information is a great idea. In fact, receiving insider information about everyday life can make the difference between success and failure in a person's life. Now, the good news is Jesus has actually provided us with this kind of quality insider information about how to do life and how to succeed in life. And this insider information is actually hidden inside his parables. And Jesus talks about these secrets of the kingdom inside his parables. Let me read this to you. Mark chapter 4, interesting, verse 10. When he, Jesus, was alone, the twelve and others around him asked him, about the parables. He told them the secret of the kingdom. Now notice that phrase. The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Mm, a bit of sarcasm there. So what's the, what's the message here? When it comes to the parables, if a person approaches the parables in a, in a haphazard, a superficial, ho-hum way, they will receive no insider information, none at all. However, if a person is willing to search and to dig deep. If a person is willing to have an open mind and an open heart to receive truth, that person through the parables will receive a wealth of wisdom for successful living. And that's why today we are beginning a new series entitled Kingdom Secrets. In this series, we are going to discover how to live successful lives according to the parables of Jesus. Now, our goal in this series, we want to learn these secrets that are tucked away and hidden in these parables. Uh, we, we want to learn to live the way God created us to live. Doesn't that make sense? If he created us, if he gave us life, 
doesn't it make sense that we you know, kind of contact him for information on how to, how to best live life? So here, here's kind of the agenda for this series. It's a, going to be a different kind of series than we've done here at Grace. Uh, the, I've divided the parables, at least the ones we're going to study, I've divided them into five categories. Now, if you've been around here at Grace very long, you know we talk a lot about five. You know, God has five purposes for our life. And, and in fact, here at Grace, we, can't, we cannot count above five. We're really bad at math. We only do five things. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to spend about three or four weeks in each of these five categories. Now, it's going to be real easy for me because I can look at the five banners on the back wall of God's five purposes of fellowship, discipleship, ministry, evangelism, and worship. In this series, we're going to use the M words. So if you kind of in your mind remember the, the grace baseball diamond going around the, the different bases. So we're going, to, we're going to start at first base. We're going to talk about membership in the kingdom. Then we're going to talk about maturity in the kingdom, and then ministry in the kingdom, and then mission in the kingdom, and then magnification in the kingdom. So e each uh, section, we'll spend three or four weeks really digging in to finding out, okay, Jesus, what did you say about your kingdom in this particular area? So the first section we're going to be in is first base. We're going to see the secrets revealed about kingdom membership. How big a deal is that? How valuable is membership in the kingdom of God? So think about that word valuable. Valuable. Now, in your own life, um, what is so valuable in your life that you'd be, you'd be willing to take a big risk to get it? Think about it. What is so valuable in your life that you'd be willing to really step out there, take a big risk, uh, on having an opportunity to, to get to it. Sometime back, the news covered a strange story about some men, they claimed they found buried treasure in their backyard. Sorry, they, they claimed they found thousands of dollars in old, rare currency, and they found it in, stored in tin cans in their backyard. Well, they got caught by the police, they didn't find it in the backyard. After all, the truth is they were repairing a guy's roof and they found the tin cans in the guy's attic and they stole them. But you know, I got to give it to these guys. Man, they valued that so much they were willing to risk prison just to get their hands on those valuable coins. Valuable. You know, when I think of that, I always think of Indiana Jones. Anybody here love Indiana Jones movies? You know, whether it's searching for the lost ark of the covenant or the holy grail, have you noticed Indiana? That guy is willing to risk life and limb to get his hands on that treasure. You better not get in the way or you will get hurt because he's going after that treasure. How about you? What is that valuable in your life? Have you ever wanted something so much that you are willing to sacrifice almost anything to have it. Now think back. Maybe, uh, maybe when you were a kid growing up, it was that starting position on the team. Man, you work like crazy. You would do anything to be a starter on the team. Or maybe it was to be popular in school, and you were willing to just about give up anything to be popular and hang out with the popular kids at school. Or maybe it was, it was to land a date with that special person that you know God had created just for you. Or maybe it was to earn a degree or to get that perfect job or the perfect spouse. Maybe it was to build your dream home. How about you in your life? Anything so valuable that man, it just consumed your life and you would do almost anything to get your hands on it. Today's parable is a story of two men who found something of great value and they were willing to sacrifice greatly to get their hands on it. However, we're going to learn today it's much more than just a story about a lucky farmer and a, and a determined merchant. 
This is actually a story about the great worth and the incredible value of being a member of the kingdom of God. Now, one little side note before we dig in. We need to remember the parables of Jesus are all about one thing, life in God's kingdom, okay? That's why almost every one of the parables begins the same way. You know what it is? Can you remember? How to, almost every, almost every, any, every one of his parables, the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like. Or if you read it in Matthew, he likes the word the kingdom of heaven. Same thing. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. So here is our working definition as we launch into this series. Okay, uh, in your notes. The kingdom of God is simply, it is the rule and reign of God in a person's life. Including you. The rule and reign of God in a person's life. So, the kingdom of God is all about this. God is king and you are not. God is king. He's in control. We are his servants. We are subjects in his kingdom. So, how important is it that God is the supreme ruler and authority in your life? How valuable do you consider God's personal daily involvement in your life. What kind of price tag, ooh, think about it. What kind of price tag do you place on your relationship with Jesus Christ? Well, today, from the twin parables of the treasure and the pearl, I love these parables, we're going to begin to learn today the true value of being a member in God's kingdom. So when it comes to the kingdom of God, What's it worth to you? What's it worth to you? Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. Value. What is the kingdom of God worth to you? In these two parables, we're going to learn three challenges. Challenge number one. Ready? Ready? Find God's kingdom. Whatever it takes, whatever the cost, find God's kingdom. Now, I've noticed over the years that different people find God's kingdom in different ways. So I want you to think of primarily two categories because both of these we see in, in the parable. So first of all, in your notes, some people find God's kingdom like the farmer who what? Who stumbles onto a buried treasure. You know, kind of imagine, you know, a guy's out uh, uh, plowing this field. You know, he doesn't own the field, but he's plowing the field, making a living. And he's going along, all of a sudden, he hears this clunk, and his plow catches on something. And he gets down there and starts digging, and he, there's a box. And he opens up the box, and it is full of treasure. So what does he do? He closes the lid. Looks around to see if anybody sees him, covers it up. He goes and buys that field, and then he's got the treasure. When my brother and I were teenagers, my parents one day took us to an estate sale. And, and my brother had his eye on this oval rug. It's pretty big, you know, six, eight foot oval rug. You know, it, it would really look good in our bedroom. And my brother said, I'm going to buy that oval rug. So he bid on it, and he got it. And so my brother, he's going to load it into the car, and so he grabbed, and he starts rolling up. You know how you roll up an oval rug? So he starts rolling it up, and he realized that underneath was a brown paper liner. You know how they used to put those brown paper liners, thick paper underneath a, an oval rug? And my brother didn't want the brown paper, so he just kind of left it and just rolled up the rug. And 
As he started rolling the rug, my brother looked down, and all of a sudden he realized there was money, cash, $10 bills, $20 bills. And it was in between the brown liner and the rug. So my brother quickly rolled the rug back. We're teenagers. He didn't know what to do, so we went and found Dad. He said, Dad, there's money in that underneath, between the liner and the, and the rug. What should I do? And my honest dad <laughs> said, you bought the rug, not the money. You need to return the money to the owner. I think the owner gave my brother 20 bucks. <laughs> He's going to pay for that. Yeah. Someday he'll stand before God. Uh, <laughs> But that's another sermon. I mean, but that, my brother, when he bought the rug, he wasn't buying the money. He, he bought the rug. Man, but boy, when he started, unru- he found this buried treasure. And he didn't want anybody to find it. That, that's how some people find the kingdom of God. I could tell you story after story of people who, it's just like they stumble into the kingdom of God. I've seen some people will go to a Christian concert just to hear rock and roll music and the gospel is presented and they accept Christ that when they came to that concert they weren't planning on it but it just kaboom they just like stumbled into it I have seen other people will pick up a book and they'll read it and they'll give their life to Christ while reading the book I don't know how many thousands of people have given their life to Christ reading the purpose-driven life thousands of people or mere christianity by c.s lewis other books Uh, some people will just kind of stumble into church and i've talked to people and they i don't know what brought me here i was driving down the road saw your sign saw all the cars in the parking lot just pulled in didn't have anything else to do and i gave my life to christ (laughs) it's the craziest thing in the world or maybe visiting a small group or a bible study there some people are like the guy who found the buried treasure didn't plan on it it just happened it just happened i love i I told the story before i love this true story this uh, the swiss christian physician paul tournier tells about an experience he had after he wrote his first book he went back to to his medical school to visit his favorite old professor and he asked for an afternoon of his time So as they sat in the gathering gloom of that Swiss winter afternoon, Paul Tournier read his new book to his old professor. And when he finished, he looked up and there were tears in the eyes of his professor. And the professor said, oh, Paul, that is a wonderful book. Every one of us Christians should read it. Tournier was a bit surprised and said, professor, I did not know you were a Christian. When did you become a Christian? He said, just now, as you read this book. See, some people are just going to stumble into the kingdom like finding a buried treasure. However, there's another category of people that I have met. I bet you have too. In your notes, other people find God's kingdom like the merchant who discovers a valuable pearl after what? After a long search, he didn't stumble onto this thing. He was looking for it. I've met a number of people in my life who have found Jesus and entered his kingdom after years and years of looking and searching in all the wrong places. (laughs) For example, let, let me mention a few. Jonathan, age 35, who searched for truth in philosophy and Eastern religions and even got involved in cults. But only Christianity could withstand his critical questions. And only Christianity could provide genuine answers to his deepest longings for the meaning of life. And then I think of of Alice, age 28. Alice searched for acceptance and purpose in the drug culture and and empty sexual encounters until she finally found genuine love and acceptance in a relationship with Christ. But it was after a long search. And I think of Charles, age 42, who searched for fulfillment in achieving financial security, 
but he ended up finding a, a void that money could not fill, but a God who could. But it was after years and years of searching. You'll meet people like that. Some of you in the room are that way. You didn't give your life to Christ when you were 12 years old or 13 years old. Some of you waited and waited and you had to search. Many of you searched in all the wrong places until you finally found the truth and reality that was found only in the relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, speaking of long searches, H.G. Wells, I know you know the name H.G. Wells, never, uh, never was a particularly religious person, but it's interesting toward the end of his life after he had studied the history of humanity and observed human life, he finally came to a very interesting conclusion. Here's what he said. Religion is the first thing and the last thing. And until a man has found God and been found by God, he begins at no beginning and works to no end. Oh, he may have friendships, his partial loyalties, his scraps of honor, but all these things fall into place and life falls into place only with God. Took him a lifetime to figure that out. I think of the same thing with George Bernard Shaw at the end of his life. You know, Shaw is perhaps most renowned as a free thinker, very, very liberal philosopher. However, at the end of his life, in some of his last writings, he penned these words. Listen carefully. The science to which I pin my faith is now bankrupt. Its councils, which should have established the millennium, led instead directly to the suicide of Europe. Oh, I believed them once. In their name, I helped destroy the faith of millions of worshipers in the temples of a thousand creeds. And now they look at me and witness the great tragedy of an atheist who has lost his faith. Amazing. You ever met an atheist who eventually lost his faith in atheism? That was Shaw. So, some people are going to stumble into the kingdom and others are going to find it after a long, long search. It doesn't really matter. Jesus says, whatever you do, find it. Find the kingdom. Challenge number two, enter God's kingdom. Enter God's kingdom. Now, as we've just seen, the twin parables differ on how you first find God's kingdom. However, did you also notice both parables are in total agreement in another area, and that is how a person enters the kingdom. You see, finding the door to God's kingdom is one thing, but entering the door, that's something else. You see, we may arrive at the threshold by various means, but once we're at the door, there's only one door. And there's only one way to enter the door. Both stories are in perfect agreement as to the cost of attaining the buried treasure and the valuable pearl. May I remind you? And the farmer sold everything and bought the field. And the merchant sold everything and bought the pearl. So what's the cost? We better put this in our notes. The cost of entering God's kingdom is everything. It's everything. A total sacrifice of yourself to God. It means giving God, the king, sovereign control of every aspect of your life. You now live for God, not for yourself. There's a lot of other scriptures that confirm this. Let me point out a few. Romans 12, 1. Remember this one? Paul says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, there's the treasure, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Or how about Jesus in Luke chapter 9 says this, Then he said to them all, 
Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? And a little bit later in Luke chapter 14, he says, wow, look at this. In the same way, those of you who do not give up what? What? Everything cannot be my disciples. Wow. So, you got to find the kingdom. And then once you find it, you got to enter it. Cost you everything. Leave it all outside. Go on in. But let's get challenge number three. You ready? Enjoy God's kingdom. Even though the cost is enormous, the payoff is well worth it. Notice, for both the farmer and the merchant, did you notice? There were no regrets. No second thoughts. Man, I shouldn't have bought that field. Oh, what was I thinking buying this stupid pearl? Notice, no second thoughts. In fact, their sacrifice, it says, was made with great joy. So what do we need to learn and never forget? You might want to write this down. When we find and enter God's kingdom, we discover a new life filled with meaning, purpose, and value. True value is found in the kingdom of God. And this is why Jim Elliott, the martyred missionary, could say these profound words. Remember this? He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep in order to gain what he cannot lose. Enjoy God's kingdom. Someone asked, someone asked the late great coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Tom Landry, they asked him, uh, Coach Landry, how many of your players had the potential of being all pro? Landry's answer surprised me. He said, every one of them. He said, we would never ever draft a player if we were not fully convinced that he could be all pro. The person said, well, then why are just such a few ever declared and reached the achievement of all pro? And Landry answered, drive, determination, and the willingness to give everything they've got. Only those, he said, will be all pro. The willingness to give everything. Perhaps today you find yourself standing at the threshold of God's kingdom. Maybe you're here, maybe you're online, and you just kind of stumbled in here. And you kind of go, I don't know what I'm doing here. Or I don't know how I stumbled onto this webpage and why I'm watching this message. Or it could be that you're after, here after a long, long search. I mean, you, you've been looking and you've been searching for something that is true and solid and real. See, really what matters is not how you got here. What, what matters is you're here. You're here. So now the question is, you're at the threshold. Will you enter in to the kingdom of God? Are you today willing to give up everything to receive a treasure more valuable than you could ever imagine. Membership in the kingdom of God. What's it worth to you? Let's pray. Well, Lord Jesus, we know the value of the kingdom for you. You were willing to give up everything so that the door of the kingdom might be open for us. So Lord, I pray for any here today or watching online that may be at the threshold of your kingdom. And I pray, Lord, that they will hear your voice saying, come on in, enter my kingdom. Leave everything outside, you won't need it. Just bring yourself. Father, I pray that each and every person standing at the threshold 
will hear your voice and will enter in to the joy of your kingdom. And we thank you for this in the wonderful name of Christ. Amen.